Hi, and welcome back to the Nerdy Magic Girl podcast. I am Milady Confetti, your host. And today I want to talk about Wakanda Forever. Um, if you have not yet seen Wakanda Forever, um, I suggest uh, now you do some self-care and stop listening or watching the podcast and go see Wakanda Forever or wait till you see it. Um, if you want no spoilers, absolutely no spoilers, I'll try to keep things uh, spoiler free as much as I possibly can. But um, if that's not something that you want to see or want to hear, I'll see you in the next one. That's perfectly okay. Um, I don't have any notes or anything prepared for this episode. Um, I kind of just want to speak from the heart because this movie impacted me in so many ways. And I really, like, I knew it was going to be sad. I knew it was going to be deep. I just didn't know it was just going to hit every single emotion in my body. Um, yeah. So I, I, I went and saw the movie with my mother. Um, I went to the Xbox event uh, the week before where I wore all white. Um, the white dress is actually hanging from the closet right here. That was the dress that I wore to the Xbox event. Um, and for my listeners, it's just a white dress with some floofs on the bottom. Um, and yeah, that was really, really, really cool to to experience. Um, we got to see the limited edition uh, Black Panther Xbox uh, Series X and the controllers. Met a lot of content creators. It was really cool. Um, and honestly, we had a meet and greet. Um, we had a and a excuse me, with um, some local folks who are doing a lot in STEM and STEAM fields um, who primarily are led by Black women. And I was given the opportunity to um speak my mind about a lot of things that are happening as a black woman and a black content creator and how often even with things like Wakanda Forever we're as creators we're often black women are often left out of the room and it sucks that like a film that centers on black women um often as black women we are left out of the room and it is really sad to see um, and then the following week I saw the movie and my heart just ex had so many feelings and emotions, but we're going to come back to that event and I want to talk about Wakanda forever. So we sat down, had popcorn. I didn't, we had food and all the things, ordered all the things. And, um, when the movie started, like literally at the beginning, beginning, tears were already falling. Tears were already falling. Um, you know how they do like the Marvel introduction, like it's, you know, Captain America, Hulk and everybody from, you know, all the phases up until now. And they show all the characters in the Marvel logo. It was just Chadwick and it was silent. I, uh, Ooh, my makeup is really good today. So I'm going to do my best not to cry. But that was, um, that was heavy. That was really heavy. I, I, I never... I'm not really into uh, fawning over celebrities and things like that, but there are some people who have just had an impact in my life. I guess I never really took the time to really appreciate. And I guess I shouldn't dismiss it just because they are celebrities, but Chadwick, Chadwick Boseman, that, that he, such an inspiring person. And I honestly think like learning more about him and, you know, things that he stood for, things that he worked for really helped me re-fall in love with the craft of content creation and what I do and what I do has an impact and it matters. So, um, yeah, uh, so it began there and, you know, the story was pretty much, you know, starting right out, acknowledging that T'Challa, T'Challa is dead. He's gone. And, you know, Shuri is trying to recreate the heart-shaped herb to cure him of his illness. And ultimately, he dies. Um, and you see each of the main characters go through their stages of grief. And, you know, there is, you know, M'Baku, who is pretty much like 
and the acceptance phase because apparently he knew that before I guess b- besides the queen that he was sick um, and that he would need to act as a mentor to Shuri once he was gone. So, you know, Mbaka was more of acceptance. Um, Queen Ramonda, I think she like, you know, cause I, I feel like even though they all went through the set, the stages of grief, I think like each of them was trying to like symbolize one of the parts, like the most, even though they all kind of went through their own cycle. So Queen Ramonda was probably more like, you know, negotiating, um, and trying to get to that space of acceptance. And I think more so in the end she did, um, well, her end, um, Shuri was just straight up denial, just straight up denial and everything like very much focused on, um, on Shuri. And I love that through the entire film, through the entire experience that people allowed her to feel what she needed to feel. People allowed her to go through the stages of grief, just allowed her to feel all the things that she needed to. Nobody gaslit her. Nobody told her you're wrong. Nobody's telling you, well, yep, yep, yep. you're doing team too much. Like her anger, her being upset, her loss, her grief, like all of it was very much justified. And I think it was a year or two um, or a couple years had passed or whatever. And, um, you know, she was still, you know, going through that, still going through the grief. And while she had distractions, and like, you know, she'd sunk her teeth in her concentration 100% into her work and stuff like that. Um, because then she kept getting re-traumatized because she kept experiencing more pain around her. Um, so she really, you know, while she's trying to grieve her brother's death, you know, here she is getting re-traumatized over and over and over again. And um, people let her experience that and gave her the space to feel what she needed to feel. And I think that was the biggest thing that I took away from Black Panther. Because I know for me, I know I, I, I don't really talk about my specific grief much. Um, but, you know, when I was graduating grad school, um, about, oh my goodness, that was whew, about... A week before I graduated, it was finals week. Um, I had lost my roommate to suicide. Um, and then 30 days later, one of my best friends did the same thing. And he had caught my best friend had contacted me, but I was shipped away to Madrid <laughs> um, to be with my cousin. And um, he had contacted me and I had gotten back to him like immediately. He wanted me to meet um, his girlfriend at the time. And um, that was really hard. Like while my roommate, I didn't really know well, that's still somebody who did that. You know what I mean? Like I might not, might have been like best friends, but like I knew her, I live with her. Like, you know what I mean? Like you go from seeing somebody every day and you just really never know what somebody is going through. And then to literally 30 days to the date my friend did like you know I, my friend was gone and I don't th- I think it took me going to grief counseling and honestly people who were in my inner circle going to therapy to really understand how I needed to be supported because people telling me you know he's in a better place they're in a better place and things like like that didn't help that didn't help but You know, how can you be a support to somebody if you don't know how to be a support even, you know, and also I wasn't good at communicating it because, you know, there was just a lot of things that, you know, this grief unlocked in me that I was trying to suppress down that I just had to deal with. And, you know, that's the one thing about like Sherry's anger that I really identified with is that, you know, when she was, you know, talking to the ancestors and things like that, you know, she talked about her anger and how she wanted the world to burn. You took somebody precious from me and also angry with herself that she couldn't do anything. You know, she, she expressed to Namor that um, she's like, I have all these knowledge. I have all these gifts and I couldn't save him. Like, how do I wrestle with that? Like I wasn't enough and I have all these things. And Neymar had answered, you know, it's just like, I don't have an answer for you because there is no answer. And I know like for me, it's just like, you know, with 
me, I, there was a lot of that, that anger and that haziness and things like that. And say like, you know, how did I not know my friend was going through these things? Or how did I not know my roommate was feeling as bad as she did? How? And there's no answer for that. And that was very hard to accept. Very, very hard for me to accept. But again, I still love that, like, even when um, she was, you know, expressing herself to M'Baku, you know, about her anger, it kind of like, you know, slipped out a little bit there. He was just like, he shook his head. Because she needed to feel that. She needed to get that out. She needed to express it. Um, and that's completely understandable. <laughs> Well, I did feel the plot was um, with Riri Williams was pretty dope. I do feel like she was kind of forced to be <laughs> to be in the plot, um, because I don't I don't know why do you have to kill the scientists who built the thing, and like why is the CIA? It was just like it was just very strange. It just felt very strange. It felt very forced to me. But I still think Riri Williams was really cool. Um, I thought the actress who played her was dope. Um, again, I love the dark skinned woman representation. I will always, always root for that. Always, all the time. <laughs> I will always root for that because, you know, I want more dark skinned women to be front and center. Um, there was a like small, like hint of LGBT QIA, like representation. It was like one second, one second, um, at the end of the movie. I thought that was really awesome to put in there. Um, yeah, I, I, I just, I really think that Ryan Coogler was given, I don't, I want to say in the, the impossible, the really the impossible, you know, you, you never, it's, it was horrible losing Chadwick. And it's just like, I, I'm really glad that they didn't recast it. I'm very glad that this movie was so matriarchal. Angela Bassett stole every single scene that she was in. If that woman is not nominated for an Oscar, I will, I will scream. <laughs> I will actually scream. She stole every single scene, but you saw how like loving and nurturing Queen Ramonda is not just to Shuri, but to Riri and to the, to her people, to the people around her and that she will be mama bear and protect. She will protect period. Um, and I absolutely love that. And I know my mom loved that too. Cause my, I went and saw it with my mom. Um, and it was just, I, I, I just felt by the end of the movie, because, you know, I'm not going to do, you know, horrible, horrible spoilers. But by the end of the movie, I, 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 while I was still, you know, felt the sadness of, you know, Chadwick not being there. I, I, I understand why Ryan Coogler, like, used um, We Gonna Be All Right um, in the trailer um, with No Woman, No Cry. I, I, I understand it now because it's like we are going to be okay. And... We're all going to get through this, but it, it really does take a village. It takes a village to get through this. Like, I genuinely love this movie. I see it. I, it. There's some rumblings of like Oscar nods and stuff like that. I saw something on the Black Panther IG and I, I hope I hope that that happens um, because, like I said, the performances were amazing. Angela Bass is so every scene. I absolutely love Namor. I love the representation um, that is coming for you know indigenous folks and you know um the latin a community like i just i absolutely love that for y'all i am so sorry about you know a lot of the colorism and stuff that's coming out of that <laughs> um I, I i i i empathize with that because when black when the first black panther came out um there were a lot of people a lot of light skin um women who, black women who were complaining that you know all the dora milaje are dark skin and all everybody in the thing is dark skin like where's the light skins at and it's like um no <laughs> can you let us have something can we have be represented once in a positive light um and a positive thing and be loved on and things like that can we have that can we have that for a second is that okay um but honestly beautiful name more is actor oh my gosh just absolutely amazing. Sorry, I don't know everybody's name yet, um, but I know everybody is obsessed and thirsty over him. And honestly, I understand it. I get it. Um, yeah, I hope that this, this gets Oscar nods. I want to circle back to um, what I was talking about in the beginning about Black women and representation. Especially, and I always will root for dark-skinned women because, you know, a lot of people, we, we don't even get in the door 10 times out of 10 in this case. Um, there was a lot of issues with um, uh, the Black Panther premiere in the beginning of the month. Um, I believe it was the first Wednesday of November, Wednesday or Thursday. 
and not a lot of black women were invited to the premiere, um, weren't hosting and things like that. And what we saw, what I saw, and I'm going to speak for what I saw in my experience and things like that, what I saw like happening on TikTok between various social media platforms was that a lot of black women were being asked last minute. The people who were asked last minute, um, you know, of course, were, you know, lighter skinned and things like that. And, you know, I'm rooting for black women. I just really, 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 really want to see myself represented. Um and it was also really cool to see that Grace Africa was um, invited um, from the jump. So she had an invite invite. Um, and I also heard that a lot of the people who from the lot from the few people who were there who were black and most of them, majority of them were black men. They were other people's plus ones. That is very strange. I don't know how true, how credible that is, but that was what people were um, expressing. And that's very sad if that were, that's true. Um, but the thing is, is like when I see those red carpets, purple carpets and things like that, especially when you have so many women represented in such represented in strong roles, why wouldn't black women content creators be focused on to have on that carpet to host, to have on that carpets to do interviews and do things like that? Like, why weren't we put first? You know what I mean? Um and I mean, black, all black women, disabled black women, dark skinned black women, better. Like, I, why were, why weren't we pushed to the forefront? And I can only attribute this because I was speaking to um, somebody who is, works in the industry, and I said, you know, humor me. Am I losing my marbles and thinking or thinking based on what I see that the these. The industries that we're in, whether it's, you know, gaming, whether it's video, anime and stuff like that, really want to go back to like the boys club or, you know, you don't cross this line unless you're conventionally attractive or you hit some kind of standard of beauty and blah, blah, blah. Am I losing my mind that we're going back to pre-2018 type of mindset and that if you mention diversity and intersectionality, you're an inconvenience or you're a problem? And the person who I was speaking to, who again works in the industry, I'm not gonna, you know, out who they are. They were like, no, you're not, you're not losing your marbles. That's exactly what you see. So what do you do? And, you know, it's a very powerless, powerless um place to be. It's a power powerless place to it it powerlessness, like it just feels horrible. Um, I kind of felt backed, I like I feel backed into a corner. And it wasn't until I think it was I rewatched Chadwick Boseman's speech um, when he was talking to, you know, Denzel Washington and talking about there would be no Black Panther without Denzel Washington. But also like when he was, you know, doing, you know, graduation speeches and things like that, like how he talked about the love of the craft and that the other things will come. And like he talked about his story and Honestly, that revitalized a lot in me because honestly, that was just the spark that I needed to help me get realigned. Um, and also, you know, therapy and stuff like that. I'm always a huge advocate for that. Um, and also just, you know, listening to Angela Bassett and talking about how, you know, how she went to Yale for theater and, you know, her parents were, you know, be like, you're not going to waste a Yale degree on theater. And she's like, no, I believe in me. Like, I'm going to do this thing. I'm going to do it. I'm go this is plan A. Um, I just I, I I love that. And also somebody, you know, who <laughs> I know he is not alive, but you know, I was watching um some old interviews with Queen and Freddie Mercury, you know, speaking about like, you know, I'm just gonna do what I do best because I love doing this thing. I love making music, I love performing. That is the things, those are the things that inspire me. And those are the things that I have to focus on because all this other stuff is very draining to me. And it honestly detracts me from the love of the craft. Um, and, you know, it's not, I'm not saying it's unimportant or it's not something to be aware of. It's something I'm always going to be aware of. But I will say, because I have my platform, that you, that these industries have to do better by black women. We are powerful we're soft, we're vulnerable, we're talented, we work so hard, 
and honestly deserve the world. <laughs> um, I, I want to live in a world where that old saying in the black community that we have, you know, you have to work twice or three times as hard to get half. I want that to like not be a thing anymore. So now that all the pomp and circumstance of 2020 is over and we're heading into now 2023, I just really hope that a lot of these industries and people who have power really take time to reflect um, and honestly live up to the things that, you know, that were promised or sworn or worked on or all those things in 2022, 2021. I really hope that because we could have so many Ryan Kuglers. We could have so many Letitia's. We could have so many Lupita's. We could have so many more Chadwick's. We just have to invest in us. You have to invest in blackness, especially black women. You, you, you have to. We can have more Angela Bassett's. The world needs more Angela Bassett's, please. Oh my gosh, her biceps are awesome. Um, <laughs> I've always admired her workout routine, honestly, like goals. I'm, I'm trying to get there. I'm trying to get there, Angela. I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying my best. Um, but yeah, that is one thing. I Overall, Wakanda Forever, I definitely give it a solid 9 out of 10. Solid 9 out of 10. I absolutely loved it. Um. It's going to take me a minute to be able to see it again because it just triggered a lot in me with my own personal grief that I'm still working through and processing and things like that. And yes, even if it's been years, it's still my process and it's still mine. Um, but an absolutely beautiful film. Um, I highly recommend you go see it. It'll probably be out on Disney+. Plus. Um, I don't, I don't know how long they're going to keep it in theaters. I don't know if they want to like a certain goal monetary i i don't know um but watch it as soon as it's out on disney plus and have tissues nearby because it is a journey it is a journey and it's a beautiful one yeah so if you have seen black panther wakanda forever um what are your thoughts tell me what you think about it try to refrain from putting too many spoilers in, you know, the comment section here on YouTube. Um, if you're listening, you can, you know, at me at Milady Confetti on all my social medias, um, because I love having those conversations. Um, I want to, you know, your thoughts, because this is, this one was very special. And Ryan Coogler, you did an amazing job, an amazing job. You should definitely be proud. I know Chadwick is very looking down and probably smiling and grinning and all the things. But until then, um, follow the podcast on um, all social medias at Nerdy Magical Girl Podcast. Um, and that is Twitter, Instagram. I also have it here on YouTube. But um, if you want to go follow over there. Um, and I am Milady Confetti, your host once again. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.